Hey guys, Crydon here with another bite sized review. Now, the Backout Cub is a game that I don't think is getting enough coverage, so I'm going to shed some light on it and you can make up your own minds regarding it. In the Blackout Club, you play the role of a young teen who's trying to work out what is going on in your town. At night, the adults sleepwalk and act strange, and the children black out and wake up in odd places, sometimes covered in blood or mud. Hence, the Blackout Club. Upon starting the game for the first time, you can design the look of your character and then choose from one of four main abilities. Do you want to use a drone to get a bird's eye view of the enemy? How about prank calling them so they can't detect you? Or do you prefer more physical abilities such as being able to pin down an enemy or being able to ignore damage? All of these can be leveled up using points you gain from leveling along with other minor perks such as being able to start with a lockpick or getting extra items from boxes. You can then choose your main active item, a stun gun for quick escapes, a crossbow for silently knocking out enemies from afar, or, my personal favourite, the grappling hook. It'll become pretty clear why soon. Every mission is started from the clubhouse and drops you in the town. As you level up from doing missions, more and more of the town itself will open for you, and while yes, you always start up here in the town, a lot of the gameplay is in the winding caverns underneath that the adults have been a building. The missions are randomised every time you go into a game and vary from cleaning up after another kid's blackout, searching for evidence of what's happening in town, or disabling traps set out by the sleepers. When trying to accomplish your objectives, the key is stealth. You're still a child and the enemies are all adults. The main two enemy types you'll encounter to start with are the sleepers, regular parents who are sleepwalking and can't see but can hear you. These are the most common enemies you'll encounter and can be easy to navigate around but also very easily corner you. The other common enemy type is the lucids, adults who are able to see and you'll need to keep in the dark to avoid them. Most of this game is about sneaking around the sleepers and not hurting them because hey, that could be your parents, right? And it's not like they're doing this on purpose. The more you're seen or the more your acts are found by the sleepers or lucids, the more these are classed as sins. And the more sins you have, the sooner the angel or the shape will come after you. An invisible enemy that you can only see when you close your eyes that is, well, invincible. You can knock it out, you can stagger it, but eventually it's going to come after you it's not going to stop on top of all this there are booby traps and security cameras located around the town and caverns to help with this you have your abilities your hero item and enemy at any items you can find along the way you also have the ability to team up with three other players so that you can support each other get these objectives done and if needs be if you are captured by the enemy and turned into a sleeper yourself, they can come along and save you from this. Now, the reason I prefer the grappling hook is due to the ability to maneuver around the town and caverns without being seen, meaning you can avoid racking up any sins. Stunning enemies or knocking people out are both sins, and to be able to use the crossbow, you need to find the ammo on the map. Which, if you find the ammo without the crossbow, you can still use it, you just have to sneak up close to the enemy and stab them with it instead. The story and setting for this game though is the greatest part. The game revolves around different gods that are each taking their own disciples, and one main god that is causing all of these issues in town. And if you opt into enhanced horror mode, some of the most unique storytelling features I've ever seen used in the game become available. Firstly, you can sacrifice to the gods to ask them questions. These can be answered then and there by inviting you to go to sleep on your sleeping bag, or later on. Because at the end of every mission, you can choose to remember a dream, which is the question and answer from one of these sacrifices. Not just your sacrifices, but the ones from other players as well. And just so there's no misunderstanding regarding this, this isn't you sacrifice something you get to choose from a list of options. You record your question. It gets sent to them and then they choose whether they want to get in contact and answer that. The other really, really cool storytelling element is the ability of the voices to actually join your game. 
They have voice actors playing the gods themselves who can join your game and interact with you, guiding you to safety or answering questions, and being in-game and having your username read out by a disembodied voice for the first time, actually responding to your reaction to that gives you chills. Due to this, the community itself is very tight-knit with people sharing their experiences to try and piece together the story that's going on in this town. Because you might have a god, one of the gods come and talk to you, while another person has another god talk to them and give them separate information. So the Discord group and the forums are very tightly knit with people trying to piece together what exactly is going on. Overall, I definitely recommend giving this game a go, especially if you're a fan of stealth games or things with a Stranger Things kind of theme. One last thing as well that I haven't mentioned so far is the ability to actually invade other players' games. You can join as a stalker and your role is then to record what the other players are doing to rack up sins for them so that the angel will come after them faster. This is another layer of interesting gameplay on top of the rest of the stealth gameplay that you're doing. And again, I would definitely recommend this if you're a fan of stealth games, if you want to try out a new kind of stealth game, a multiplayer style with a very unique storytelling standpoint, I would definitely recommend trying this out. But that's entirely up to you guys. And if you did enjoy this, don't forget to let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button and as always, subscribe for more content.